Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. And today we're going to work on equivalent fractions. Uh, it's a very important concept. Actually, I can't stress how important this concept is. Because up until now with our discussion of fractions, we've talked about mostly what fractions are, what they represent, um, and how do we take a sketch of a fraction, like a pie or a cake, and turn it into something that we can write in terms of math, like a, like a fraction that we write on the board, okay? Now, in this section, we're going to do something extremely important, and that is we're going to show you that two different fractions, even though they look different, can actually represent the same thing. And that is so important because a lot of students will look at a fraction and then look at another fraction that looks different when you write it down, but be completely confused as to how they can represent the same thing. But in fact, that is one of the things about fractions that you have to understand. So the, the way that we get there is one thing I want to teach you now before we write anything down. And it's very important. That is that, and I want you to remember this, when you have a fraction, remember there's a numerator on the top and the denominator on the bottom. Um, whenever you have a fraction, you can multiply that fraction by anything you want, any number you want, as long as you multiply the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by the same number. All right, so if you want to multiply the top of the fraction by four, that's okay, as long as you multiply the bottom of the fraction by four also. You can multiply the top of the fraction by 16 if you want to, uh, but uh, the only thing is you have to make sure and multiply the bottom of that fraction by 16 as well. So when you do that, you keep the fraction in balance, and that's how you make them and, and see that they're equivalent. So let's do an example to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's draw a picture of the most famous fraction of them all. Here's our pie, and here we've cut it exactly into two pieces. So let me go ahead and shade this guy. If this is the amount of pie that we actually have, what fraction do you think we have? Well, we have two pieces in a uh, total, and I only have one of these two pieces. So this is one half. This is the most famous fraction of all, right? Half a pizza, half a pie, half of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever. All right, so let me, let me show you something. What I can do is I can put an equal sign here, and I can take, I told you, I can take the top and bottom of this fraction, and I can multiply it by anything I want as long as I do it to the top and also to the bottom. So I can rewrite my one half, and I'll just make a longer little fraction bar here. And I can multiply the top of this fraction by the number two. But if I do that, I just have to make sure that I can also multiply the bottom of my fraction also by two. That's very, very important for you to understand. I can multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And if I do that, I'll change to another color here. What will I, what will I get? One times two is two and two times two is four. Now this is absolutely crucial that you understand. When I do this here, when I multiply the top and the bottom by a number, then even though it makes the fraction look different in the end, it's exactly equal to the fraction that we started with. So that's something that you have to get used to seeing. Two fractions can be the same thing, but they just might look different. In other words, two out of four pieces of a pizza is the same thing as one out of two pieces of a pizza. And to show you that, let's go ahead and draw this second fraction over here to take a look at it. So if we have this guy right here is our pizza. But see, now we're not chopping it into two pieces like before, we're actually chopping it into four pieces. So here is this guy and here's this guy. If I chop it into four equal pieces, but now I have two of these, of these smaller little pieces. So here is piece number one and here is piece number two. So graphically you can see that these, this represents the same amount of pizza. If I'm at a party or if I'm at a, you know, a get together and I give you one half of a pizza, one out of two pieces, it's exactly the same amount of pizza as if I give you two pieces out of four that I cut from a different pizza. And I think you understand that. If you picture a peanut butter and jelly, I cut it in half and I give you half. That's the same amount of sandwich as if I cut that sandwich into four pieces and just give you two of them. So the secret to this is understanding that you can multiply any fraction you want on the top and also on the bottom as long as you uh, do it in the, by the same number multiplying on the top as you do on the bottom. So one way to think of this, you know, I want you to kind of think of a fraction as a seesaw, you know, like a teeter-totter from the park. 
okay? So here we have, it's balanced in the middle, okay? Over here is this thing, and over here is this thing. So, you know, I'm sitting on both sides of the seesaw, and I'm perfectly balanced on the seesaw, all right? Now, everything is balanced. I can multiply this fraction by something on the top. But if I do that, I have to also multiply the bottom to keep it balanced, to make it equal to the same thing. If I start multiplying the top of this fraction by something and not doing anything to the bottom, then the fraction is no longer the same thing. So think of it as a teeter-totter. Everything's balanced as long as I do it to the top and also to the bottom at the same time when I do this guy. All right, so let's go over here and do another one uh, that will you know, continue to, to help us. Let's say we have the number, or the fraction, one half, all right? And let's multiply it by something different, just to prove to ourselves that it's the same thing. So let me rewrite this fraction again, draw a little bit of a longer fraction bar, and in this case, I don't want to multiply by two, I'm gonna multiply by three. And I said I can do that as long as I multiply the top and also the bottom by the very same number. So you see I'm multiplying on the top and the bottom by three. And when I do that, one times three gives me three, and two times three gives me six. So what I'm claiming here is that even though I've changed the way the fraction looks, in fact, they're actually exactly the same thing. They represent the same amount of pizza, or the same amount of cake, or the same amount of peanut butter and jelly, both of these two fractions. Because even though I did the multiplication, I did it to the top and also to the bottom. So to show you that, let's go figure this out. So this fraction, is our famous one half, okay? And that would be this amount of the uh, pizza. All right, and so let's go and draw this one over here just to see if it's right. And so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna cut it in half this way, and then I'm going to cut it in half this way, and then I'm going to cut it in half this way. Now, as best as I can, I'm trying to show equal pieces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, because this is out of six pieces, but I'm only actually uh, having three of these pieces. So here's a piece, here's a piece, and here's a piece. And I think you can see, by comparing these two fractions, that this is actually half of the pizza. Even though it's three pieces out of six, it represents the exact same thing as one piece out of two. So you can't always tell, just by looking at the fraction, by just reading the numbers, you can't always tell if it's, you know, if it's uh, the same or different as another fraction. You have to dig a little bit deeper because sometimes they can look different, but they can actually represent the exact same amount of pizza or cake or whatever it is you're talking about. All right, so what I want to do now is give you a little practice with this idea. Of, of equivalent fractions. And so we're going to do a little problem here, a little fun problem. Let's say we have the fraction 7 tenths. This means I cut a pizza into 10 pieces, but I only take 7 of those pieces. And I'm going to have a question mark with an equal sign there, and I'm going to write some other fractions down over here. So let's say I have 1 fourth, uh, 14 twentieths, 3 twenty-ones, twenty-firsts, 21 thirtieths and 14 tenths. And my question is, here's the original fraction I have. Here is five possible choices. We want to circle the fraction that's equivalent to 7 tenths. We want to circle the one that's equivalent. So you see we have 7 tenths. All of these fractions look totally different than 7 tenths. But one of them is actually equivalent because of what we talked about. So the way you do this is you look at your original fraction so let's write it down here, 7 tenths. And we need to figure out, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by something. And when we do that, it should equal one of these fractions on the other side. So all we need to do is figure out the fraction that matches up when we multiply this by something. So the bottom is the easiest thing. If I multiply the bottom times 2, what am I going to get? If I multiply the bottom times 2, then I also have to multiply the top times 2, and I will have 14, 7 times 2 is 14, over 20, and I look in this list and it looks like I actually have that one right there, 14 twentieths. So this fraction is equivalent to this one. It looks completely different, but that doesn't matter what it looks like. It represents the same amount of pizza. If I take a pizza, chop it into 10 pieces, and only take 7, 
It's exactly the same amount as if I take a second pizza and chop it into 20 pieces and take 14. All right. All right, now that we figured out that multiplying this fraction times two on the top and the bottom will give us this, let's just see if any of these other fractions can also be equivalent. Let's go and see, let's take this fraction, 7 tenths, and let's multiply it, in this case, by 3 over 3. Let's just see if anything else fits. All right, 7 times 3 is 21, 10 times 3 is 30. So we go up there and we look and see right away that 21 over 30 is listed there as well. So this fraction, 21 over 30, is also the same thing as 7 tenths. Now, I don't believe there are any other answers that work because if you think about it, you're multiplying by something on the top and the bottom, so it has to be a multiple of 10 on the bottom. So th there's no other fraction that works. If I multiply by 4 over 4, I would have a 40 on the bottom. If I multiply by 5, it would have a 50 on the bottom and so on. So there's nothing else in this list that works. But it's important for you to know that the, the fraction 7 tenths is exactly the same thing as 14 twentieths which is also exactly the same thing as 21 thirtieths. They're all the same thing. If I take three pizzas and I cut them up and I can't hand out the pieces that way, then it's going to be the same amount of pizza for all three of these fractions, even though this looks totally different than this, which also looks totally different than that. So let's move on and do another problem. Let's say we have the fraction 3 eighths, and I want to figure out what is equivalent to that? And my choices are 1 8th, 3 16th, 6 16th, 9 16th, and 9 24th. And I want to figure out what is equivalent. All right, so let's go and do that now. Let's say we have uh, 3 8 Let's just start by trying to multiply by 2 to see if we can change this fraction. So we multiply by 2 on the top, so then we have to also do it on the bottom. That's the rule. 3 times 2 is 6. 8 times 2 is 16. So I look and see, do I have a 6 over 16? I have it right there. So these two fractions are the same, even though they look different. Let's see if we have any other matches. We have 8 thirds. That's our original fraction that we started with. Actually, it's not 8 thirds. It's it's 3 eighths. So let's mark it down as 3 eighths is our original fraction here. And let's multiply it. And this time we multiplied by 2. So now let's multiply by 3 and let's see what we get. 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 3 is 24. And we look and see that we have 9 24 And those are going to be the only answers because when I'm multiplying, if I multiply by 4 on the bottom, 8 times 4 is 32. I don't have any 32s in the bottom. 8 times 5 is 40. I don't have any 40s on the bottom, so there's nothing else that matches. But what this is showing is that 9 24 is exactly the same fraction as 6 over 16, which is also exactly the same fraction as 3 eighths. You can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom at the same time. All right, so the final one that we're going to do, just to bring it home, is two-thirds, and I want to figure out what it's equivalent to. So here we have one-third, two-sixth, four-sixth, four-twelfths, and six-ninths. And I want to figure out what is this fraction equivalent to, so I start with my two-thirds, and I multiply this guy. Let's just start by multiplying by two. That's the easiest thing to multiply. Two times two is four. 3 times 2 is 6, so 4 sixths. 4 sixths is in this list, so these two fractions are equivalent, even though they look a little bit different. Okay, and let's just try for giggles, we'll try 2 thirds, and we'll try to multiply by 3. We'll multiply by 3 on the bottom, 3 on the top. We have to do it in both places. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. So I go up there and I see, do I have 6 ninths? And I do. So that's equivalent. Now I can keep going, I can keep multiplying by four, right? But let's just, let's just see, let's just do it real quick. Two thirds, if I multiply by the top by four and the bottom by four, on the top I'll get eight, and on the bottom I will get 12. So I look for eight twelfths, I don't see it. I have a four twelfths, that's different. That's not equivalent. 
if I keep multiplying by five and by six and by seven, I'm not going to have any matches here. So I'm done with that. So we can see here that these two fractions are equivalent to each other and they're also equivalent to two thirds. This section, I really can't stress how important it is. The most of the challenge with fractions with, with people is that um, you can have two fractions look different, but they actually mean the same thing. And that, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a hard concept, but it can be for a lot of people. So we did the first couple of problems with the pictures to show you how it's true. The number one rule to remember is you can multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by anything you want as long as you multiply the top by the same number that you're multiplying the bottom. That keeps everything in balance. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next section where we will continue building your skills with fractions.